Hello everyone. In some of the previous videos we have already discussed nonlinear modeling without much pre-knowledge about the right hand side of the ODE, in particular the neural ordinary differential approach where the right hand side is quite free and we can choose many elements of the structural design of the ODE by an artificial neural network for example. In this video I would like to talk a little bit about extrapolating such data-driven models where we do not really tightly control the dynamics by physical, technical pre-knowledge about the structure um, and what can happen if you utilize such a model and apply it into an operating domain which we have not seen during the training. So what do I mean with that? The standard system identification approach uh, is of course that we go to some test bench or we observe some field data regarding state X and inputs U of the system, not considering outputs for the moment. And what will happen is we will observe some data, so this is just like a cartoonic representation of some state and input transitions, and we utilize this input data in order to fit our model, for example here, a node-style data-driven model. So this would be based on a training data, right? And this training data specifically takes into account this domain of the state input space. So, assume we have fitted the data and assume that the data fit was quite okay, so that given this training data, the model seems to be accurate. What can now happen in many applications is that this model in the application phase, in the inference phase, might see new data outside the domain which it had been trained for. So what can happen is that there might be some situation where the state inputs are like, for example, here. So in this area where we could have the application phase. Right? And in this application phase, of course, we see that the states, especially the states, are uh, much larger and different from the inputs. Um, if that happens, the question is, what will our model do if we apply it to a situation which has had been not seen during training. In parameter identification, where we had specific pre-knowledge about the system dynamics and we just needed to tune some of the parameters, that was not a big issue because this physical container of structural knowledge ensured that if we apply the system to new data, to new state input combinations, that this will be still fine. In a more black box model where this right hand side is structurally unknown or partly structurally unknown, of course the used data will also shape the structure itself and if we extrapolate the model into an operating domain which has been not seen before, that can lead to systematic prediction errors. And I would like to put that to an example using one of the previous um, applications which we have already seen in one of the previous videos, which is the DC motor temperature example where we have used an Hammerstein neural ordinary differential equation approach in order to describe the thermal behavior of a simple DC motor model. Um, and I just want to yeah, bring you an example on this extrapolation issue giving this model approach. So what we do is we basically follow the previous uh, identification procedure. So we generate some ground truth data, actually the same ground truth data as before. Then we train the node model, which is already having some structural knowledge, right? So we know that the ODE looks like this and the only structural unknown part was the static input uh, loss model for the input losses to the model which depend on our observable inputs. So there is already quite some structural pre-knowledge. It's not a black box node, but it's a gray box node. And structural, uh, the, the, stru the lack of structural pre-knowledge is just with respect to this input loss, okay? So therefore, um, 
yeah, there could be even worse scenarios where this entire right-hand side is structurally unknown to us. With this approach, using the previous uh, line, we have fitted a model, and um, this fit was where one of the previous uh, videos have ended, where we have basically seen that uh, on the training data, so on this area, the model seemed to work very well, we have a nice fit of the dynamics, the noise is cancelled, and so on, so very nice. Okay, but now we want to look what is happening if we take the data, or take the model, and throw it against new application scenarios. So that would be a generalization towards unseen data, but in terms of dynamics, specifically unseen input state combinations. And how do we do that? Uh, we basically change the current and speed profile. So what we do is we add a little bit more of load current here, which is not completely um, seeable here in this uh, live um, demo, but you can see it into the uh, notebook, which is on GitHub, of course. And we also change the speed. So therefore, the two inputs, the two major inputs to the uh, thermal behavior of the model are changed. Um, so that would be basically here on the U part. But of course, the true system will also react on that because if you change the currents and the speeds of a DC motor, the loss behavior will be different, and if the loss behavior will be different, also the temperature behavior will be different. So, we do that, so we change um, the currents in terms of adding some uh, extended bias to it. We also change here the harmonic components, uh, so we add the frequencies of this cos and sine terms in order to also change the input frequencies of this data. Um, here we have a visual representation of training and test data with respect to inputs. And what we can see from this uh, scanner plot is already that we already have still quite some significant overlap, right? So in this area, training and test data are overlapping. However, the test data goes a little bit to higher speeds and also goes a little bit to higher currents. So more loading to the motor, which will lead to a higher temperature rise in average. So, why do I show that? Just to showcase that again, this is not the worst case we con can consider because these two training and test data sets are not completely decoupled as I've sketched it here in this little cartoon, but they still have some significant overlap. So that's not so bad, it's not so challenging um, as we could think of if we would uh, change this test data cloud more to the right or to the uh, ceiling. Okay, with that, uh, we basically now take the previously identified model, the model structure and the model parameters are of course now fixed, we have identified them previously, and the only thing which is happening, we can see it here with this underscore notation, is that we now uh, infer the model based on the new input data, right? So model has been identified and we just give the model new input data to see what is happening uh, in terms of the model system response. And um, so we, uh, we put up our uh, node model, and then what we do is we test it again with respect to our ground truth data. So the measured green data is now the true system response, so the physical system response using the new input data, and the, greenish, uh, the uh, orange one is the prediction of the node model, which has been identified using this training data set. And what we can now see is that we have specific deviations, right? So uh, there is a systematic error between the predicted and the measured behavior up to, I guess, 15 degrees Celsius is the worst case error. Uh, and that really uh, highlights that although the Hammerstein model node has already all of this pre-knowledge, that this mild change between training and test data already led to significant deviations in the prediction versus measurement behavior in this new operating range. The only positive observation which we can find uh, from here is that due to the Hammerstein approach that the harmonics, so the frequency component of the measured and the predicted uh, temperature behavior seems to be uh, fitting well. There is more or less like a little bias to it, um, but the frequency harmonics are quite identical, which is to be expected because we have these linear dynamics on the Hammerstein internal model. However, what are the other takeaway messages here? The main takeaway message is that 
if you can control the training and application data, try to prevent such a, a scenario. Try to prevent using training data which is not representable of the later application. Try to bring up data as training data which is really representing the entire operation of a system such that your data-driven model does not need to extrapolate to unseen operation domains. Because that is where things can get really ugly, that is a danger zone. So therefore, if you can prevent this situation as we have discussed in this video, try to do that, try to take training data which is really representative of the entire system behavior. Then this issue can be easily omitted. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.